Mike Fagan, also known as the King of Swing, had quite possibly one of the smoothest games we've ever seen on the PBA Tour. The combination of his extremely high backswing but the silky smoothness he brought with it made his style incredibly unique and popular with fans. He made it look effortless and was able to generate huge amounts of speed, revs and loft when needed. Fagan quickly became a force on the tour and was regularly on TV in contention for titles. However, in a move that shocked many, Fagan announced in 2015 that he would be reducing his appearances on the PBA Tour in order to pursue his MBA. Now, he did end up winning a major in 2015, the PBA World Championship, but this didn't do anything to alter Fagan's decision as he entered just three events in 2016. What's more, he didn't make a single appearance in 2017, so Fagan essentially left the tour at the age of 36. Bowling is a very unique sport in the sense that players can enter their prime quite late and remain at the top level well into their 40s. We've even seen players such as Walter Ray, Pete Webber and Norm Duke remain very competitive right into their 50s. This is basically unheard of in many sports. I've heard people claim that in bowling, you don't truly reach your peak in the game until you hit age 40. And when you look at the performances of many of the greats, this does have a lot of truth to it. You see players almost have another peak in their late 30s, early 40s, where they just seem to take it to another level. And then at that point, the decline starts in their 40s. So at 36, Fagan still had many years at the top level left in him. Clearly he retired in his prime and it poses a few questions, such as why did he retire so soon? How many titles could he have won? And what would have happened if he had continued on the pro tour? We're going to try and answer those questions in this video. So let's look at Fagan's background to begin with. He joined the tour in the 0203 season and would make his TV debut in 2003 when he lost to Chris Barnes in the semi-final of the Empire State Open. Three years later would see Fagan have his best ever major finish after he ended up finishing third at the 2006 US Open after losing to the eventual winner Tommy Jones. It would take Fagan five years to win his first PBA title which was actually a doubles event where Fagan and his partner Danny Wiseman were victorious. The following year he came extremely close to winning his first singles title at the Shark Championship the title match against Jack Jurek was a very exciting one and it actually ended up going to a one ball roll off. Unfortunately for Fagan, an eight count would mean his quest for a singles title would have to wait. Meanwhile, for Jack Jurek, this was his first title in almost 15 years, which set a new record for the longest streak between wins. Fagan would only have to wait until the following year, however, when his first singles title came at the 2010 one a day dick webber open and it was at this point that fagan really started to establish himself on tour his first major would come when he won against chris barnes at the 2012 usbc masters overcoming a 30 pin deficit after five frames he actually had an opportunity to win a second consecutive major in that year's us open and this was the famous pete webber who do you think you are i am telecast where webber managed to strike on his final ball of the 10th frame to win by a single pin. There would then be a three-year title drought, but Fagan managed to bag his second major and fifth PBA title at the PBA World Championship. He also had success on the European Tour, winning five titles between 2005 and 2012. This included the Brunswick Euro Challenge, which he won twice, once in 2009 and once in 2012. The Euro Challenge was actually a PBA event in 2012, so this counted as a title for him, but it actually wasn't classified as a PBA event back in 2009. Let's now try and answer some of the questions I discussed at the start of the video, because all in all, things were going pretty well for Fagan. He was winning both in the US and in Europe, and everything seemed to be coming together for him. So why did he retire? As I mentioned earlier, he initially announced that he would reduce his appearances on tour in 2015 to focus on his MBA. This meant the following year, he only entered three events and then stopped altogether in the year after that. So clearly life just led him down a bit of a different direction and that direction led him to becoming the director of business development for a company that owns bowling centers in Minnesota. His intention space from his initial announcement was that he intended to play part-time on the tour 
but this didn't really end up happening for very long at all and then of course what with the events that took place in 2020 it seems that Fagan has steered even further away from the tour so how many titles could he have won obviously we never know but I think it's fair to say that Fagan would have achieved a great deal if he had stayed on the pro tour I'm almost certain he would have added at least two or three more major titles he currently has five titles but I think he easily would have doubled this total by now such was his talent he probably could have easily been heading into the 12 to 15 title range. Now, the last question and the one that will excite many fans is, could he make a return to the PBA? Well, there's two sides to this question. The first is, does he have the ability to return? And I think the answer is a resounding yes. At 43 years of age, he could still compete on the tour in my opinion. I just think that he had such a natural talent. But the other side of the question is, would he actually want to return? He gave a great interview back in 2020 and that video is on YouTube and was uploaded by Inside Bowling. In it, he didn't rule out a return, but three years on from that interview and there are still no signs. Fagan is now 43, so unless he plans to make a dramatic return for the senior tour, now would be the time to return if he's going to do so. He would certainly still be able to compete, but obviously the longer you leave it and the older he gets, the less likely a return will be. It's quite possible he simply has no interest in returning to pro bowling, which is totally understandable. Perhaps he's happy in the career he has, but for the fans, I'm sure they'd love to see him compete at the top level once again. Fagan is an incredibly gifted player with such a superb physical game that it's a shame that he's no longer showcasing his talents on the PBA tour. So for now, it seems that there's no indication that a return will happen. Now, as always, I'd love to hear from you in the comment section. So let me know how many titles you think Fagan could have won. And do you think that a return could be on the cards in the near future? Let me know. And as always, I'd like to thank you all for watching and supporting this channel. And if you've yet to subscribe, I would really appreciate it if you would click the subscribe button below. That's gonna be it for today. And as always, thank you bowling fans and see you all next time.